just start with this Richard um, Brooks case. What do you see when you watch that entire half an hour video of surveillance video and police body cam? And do you put it in the same category as George Floyd? A absolutely. I think as the police officer you had earlier pointed out, this is a man who had been frisked, so they knew he did not possess a deadly weapon. They knew that he was impaired because he had parked in that driveway. And they knew when he ran away that he did not pose a, a danger. That was a deadly force incentive. The decision to shoot him in It's been a little while, but we're back again today to talk about CNN's resident black supremacist, Angela Ray. And this time because she actually instructed black people to, quote, fight back against cops because every time we don't fight back, we die. What? You got that? Black people die at the hands of cops because they don't fight back. <laughs> We'll get right back into this episode, but first, let me quickly tell you about this free special offer for my subscribers. What will your savings in retirement look like once we've declared victory over the virus? Many Americans use this little known IRS qualified loophole that allows Americans to buy gold and silver with their retirement accounts. Call today and request a free investment kit below. Mention Drone Tech Politics and get a free one ounce silver coin for qualified retirement account holders. Must be over 40 to qualify. Call 866-915-5053 and get your free investment guide today. This is a bridge too far. It is time for not just massive reform or de-escalation. That's the wrong D, Jim. It's time to talk about defunding in a real way. We have to reimagine safer communities. We are not safe. We are not. I just have to stop here real quick because this is some next level alternative reality bullshit. How does defunding or otherwise getting rid of the police help to save black lives? There's no doubt in my mind that pulling the police out of these areas will lead to nothing but the loss of more black lives. Why? Because it's not cops killing black people, it's black people slaughtering other black people every day across this nation. And yes, it's true that every racial group kills mostly within their own racial group, but black on black violent crime and murder has has the highest rates of any other group in the country. Meaning, the greatest threat to black lives is other black people. And when it does come to interracial murder and violence, there's way more black on white than white on black. And yet, this nut job harpy is allowed to get on the national airways and incite more racial division by spewing utter lies. There was a potentially dangerous crime. He was drunk driving. And I guess what I see- He was parking, Allison, that's not fair. That man was asleep in a car parking lot. He ran and he, he realized that his life was at risk. That is why he took that taser. He was trying to fight back because every time we don't fight back, we die. And he's don't paint it that way, that is not fair. Angela, he that was in, I mean, just, to, let's just be clear. Account. Let's All just be clear about died. the facts. He was in a drive through lane. So cars were having to go around him. So we that is why he took that taser. He was trying to fight back because every time we don't fight back, we die. He died, Angela. He fought back and he died. He had no right to fight back. He was passed out drunk in a drive through The cops actually waited patiently for 30 minutes before they actually tried to detain him. His response was to fight the cops and take one of their weapons. He actually shot a taser at one of the cops. There isn't a better or more justified recipe for getting shot by the police. Now, to Allison Camerata's credit, she actually did push back, although not nearly hard enough. Nothing Ray said was truthful or factual. It was all political and racist rhetoric designed to inflame tensions. Telling black people to fight the cops who are lawfully arresting them is a surefire recipe for more black deaths. But maybe that's exactly what she wants. Ray wasn't alone in outright lying about this latest police shooting. Stacey Abrams went on CNN right after Ray and made this claim. That's the problem and let's not get distracted. The distraction that happens is that we try to find reasons that murder is acceptable when a black man or black woman is the is the victim and that should not happen. 
Okay, first of all, we would never have even heard of this story if it had been a white victim. White people being shot by the police doesn't even appear on the radar, much less people trying to quote, find reasons why killing them was acceptable. And second, there's absolutely nothing wrong with looking at the context and the facts that led up to this incident. If a black person or any person for that matter is being detained and decides to start beating the cop and take their weapons, there's a very good chance that they're gonna get shot. She acts like black people should have some special right to ignore the law and perpetuate violence. And unsurprisingly, you're seeing a lot of this from the mainstream media as well. Here's some examples of that from MSNBC. They had his license, they had his car. He could have just ran away and they could have caught him. Says L. Chris Stewart, attorney for the family of Richard Brooks, who was fatally shot by Atlanta police on Friday. There was no reason to shoot him. Or how about this example from CBS News? Tariah Brooks, cousin of Rashad Brooks. How many more protests will it take to ensure the next victim isn't your cousin, your brother, your uncle, your nephew, your friend, or your companion? We are tired. We are tired and we are frustrated. Most importantly, we are heartbroken. Okay, I'm sorry. They were supposed to let him run away with one of the police officer's weapons. Remember, he was drunk. What if he went out and hurt somebody with that taser? And please don't tell me that tasers are non-lethal weapons. They're less than lethal weapons and have a long history of actually killing people. And you know what? I don't have to worry about this being my brother, my father, my uncle, my nephew, or anyone I know because nobody that I associate with and nobody in my family would ever fight a cop if they were being detained. And they certainly went and wrestle away a weapon from a cop, shoot it at the cop, and then run off. I agree that there's some problems with police brutality and bad training, but this doesn't mean that people have a right to fight cops when they're being lawfully detained. As usual, there's lots of factors at play here that are being completely ignored by the media in place of pushing a political narrative that black people are being hunted down by the police. And as usual, it takes a bunch of people in their basements on YouTube to correct the record. That's all for this episode. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. This channel really needs support like that. If you'd like to support this channel in other ways, you can do so on one of these platforms. You can find all those links in the description and pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.